Hello everyone, let us learn today mandible. The word mandible is derived from a Latin word mandibula that means jaw bone and as you know the mandible is forming skeleton of the lower jaw and so as the name given to it is mandible. Basically the mandible is formed by fusion of its two halves in the midline over here and this portion is called as symphysis mandi. Now it's not a cartilaginous joint, it's just a misnomer. In fact in newborn this portion is having a fibrous tissue which is later on replaced by bone just because this joint is situated in the midline the name given to it is symphysis so it is symphysis mandi so if you see each half from literal aspect the mandible is made up of a body in front and a ramus behind the body has got external surface and an internal surface it has got an alveolar border or upper border and the lower border or the base the ramus has got lateral surface and medial surface it has got four borders upper border, lower border, anterior border and posterior border plus it has got a posteriorly oriented condylar process and anteriorly oriented coronoid process so let us learn individually all the parts first is the body and the external surface so if you see the external surface of the body from in front in the lower part of the midline you will find a triangular bony protuberance this is called as mental protuberance and infralaterally this protuberance has got mental tubercles now above to that mental protuberance below the incisors there is a depression this is called as incisive fossa and this provides attachment to mentalis and few slips of orbicularis oris now if you see the teeth, this is the lower central incisor, this is lower lateral incisor, this is canine and these two are first and second premolars. So in between the first and second premolars, there is in the same line, there is a mental foramen and mental nerve and vessels emerge out of it. Now below the mental foramen and lateral to the mental tubercle, there runs an oblique line which is a bony ridge running upward and backward towards third molar and it is continuous with the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible now this oblique line anteriorly in relation to both the premolars provides attachment to depressor labor inferioris and depressor angularis the posterior part of the oblique line in relation to the first second and third molar this provides attachment to the vaccinator now the attachment of vaccinator goes above in the upper border behind third molar. Now the area of the external surface below the posterior part of the oblique line, this portion. It is related to tortuous facial artery, facial vein and marginal mandibular branch of the facial now. Talking to the internal surface of the body, a similar oblique line is found from the lower part of the symphysis menti anteriorly and it is running obliquely upward and backward towards the third molar this is called as mylohyoid line and it provides attachment to mylohyoid muscle above to the mylohyoid line there is a depression called as sublingual fossa which lodges sublingual salivary gland below to the mylohyoid line there lies submandibular fossa which lodges submandibular salivary gland its superficial part right Posterior most part of the mylohyoid line over this region it provides attachment to superior constrictor muscle and the attachment goes to the upper border behind third molar over here okay so from internally superior constrictor reaches to this point from externally the vaccinator reaches to this point and interlacement of fibers of both these muscles will produce a raphe that is called a sterigomandibular raphe which is situated over here now the area of the bone between the socket of third molar and the posterior most part of the mylohyoid line this portion of the bone is directly related to the lingual nerve beneath the mucoperiosteum okay and posterior part of the symphysis menti over here you can see it has got four bony spines two above two below on either side of the midline so the upper spines are called as superior genial spines or superior genial tubercles they are providing attachment to genioglossus muscle and the inferior genial spines or inferior genial tubercles are providing attachment to 
geniohyoid muscle okay now talking to the alveolar border or upper border depending upon the age of the mandible right and depending upon the dentition the sockets are observed and they are providing attachment to the corresponding teeth right with the comphosis variety of the fibrous joint similarly the lower border or the base throughout the extent it provides attachment to the investing layer of deep cervical fascia right superficial to it there is attachment of platysma right and specifically in the region of the submandibular fossa the investing layer of deep cervical fascia will split to enclose the submandibular salivary gland anterior most part of the base shows two depression on either side of the midline you can see over here these are called as digastric fossa and they provide attachment to anterior belly of digastric right now the ramus the ramus has got a lateral surface and a medial surface the lateral surface is continuous with the external surface of the body and throughout the extent of the lateral surface it provides attachment to the masseter except posterior superiorly where it is directly related to the parotid gland posterior inferiorly the ramus shows certain oblique ridges they are produced by attachment of intramuscular septa of the masseter muscle the medial surface just above the center has got a foramen this is called as mandibular foramen and inferior alveolar nerve and vessels pass through it this mandibular foramen will lead to a mandibular canal on reaching to the point between the two premolars this mandibular canal will divide into incisive canal and mental canal this mental canal will open up in the form of mental foramen the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels will divide into mental nerve and vessels and incisive nerve and vessels now the mandibular foramen anteromedially it is guarded by a tongue like bony protrusion this is called as lingula and it is attached to the lower end of the sphenomandibular ligament right the mylohyoid groove runs below and in front of the mandibular foramen right towards the submandibular fossa and this is lodging mylohyoid nerve and vessels now posterior inferior part on the medial surface posterior inferior to the mandibular foramen it is again showing certain rough area and bony ridges they are again produced by septas of the medial pterygoid muscle so medial pterygoid muscle is attached over here the area of the medial surface behind and above the mandibular foramen this portion is related to first part of the maxillary artery okay now talking to the borders the superior border is in the form of a notch this is called as mandibular notch and it is related to masseteric nerve and vessels the posterior border is smooth and thick and it is related to the parotid gland at the junction of superior border and posterior border there forms a condyloid process you can see a condyloid structure this is called as head which is convex above and it is horizontally elliptical now this is in living it is covered by fibrocartilage and that forms temporomandibular joint with anterior part of mandibular fossa of temporal bone and in between the articular surfaces there lies an articular disc which divides the joint cavity into two compartments now next to the head is a constricted part that is called as neck throughout the extent the neck is having attachment of capsule of temporomandibular joint on lateral aspect and on posterior part of the neck it receives attachment of the ligament of the temporomandibular joint anteriorly the neck shows a depression you can see over here this is called as pterygophobia this receives insertion of lower large head of the lateral pterygoid muscle now the medial surface of the neck below the attachment of the capsule of the temporomandibular joint this is related to the auricular temporal nerve okay now anteriorly a triangular bony plate is observed this is called as coronoid process which is situated at the junction of anterior border and superior border which has got an apex two surfaces two borders and the apex of the coronoid process the anterior border the medial surface and part of the lateral surface receives insertion of tendon of temporalis in fact the entire coronoid process is produced by pulling action of the temporalis muscle 
Now the anterior border is continuous with the oblique line of the body. Okay. And if you see the level of the coronoid process with the level of the condylar process, they are almost at the same level in case of adult. But in case of newborn, the upper limit of the coronoid process is higher as compared to the condylar process. Now if you see the lower border of the ramus, it is continuous with the lower border of the body and it is continually forming the base of the mandible. The junction of the lower border of the ramus with the posterior border of the ramus is forming an angle. This is called as mandibular angle and in an adult it is around 110 to 120 degree but in case of neonate and in case of elderly it is obtuse it is around 140 degree okay now and there are three points to consider for determining the age of the given mandible one is the position of the mental foramen in case of adult it is almost at the midpoint of the upper and lower border but in case of elderly because of falling of the teeth and erosion of the sockets the mental foramen will reach to the upper border and in case of newborn the mental foramen is situated near the lower border right second point is the angle of the mandibular angle that we already discussed and third is the sockets of the alveolar border right so depending upon the dentition the sockets are observed and in case of elderly particularly the teeth are fallen and the sockets are eroded right let me show you see this here you can see the teeth are fallen and sockets are eroded right so that will help you in determining the age of the given mandible right so these criteria you will have to see for determining the age so this is about bony features and attachment of the mandible hope you understood well thanks for watching